just incredible. The engine, it all just makes your heart leap for joy. never experienced anything like it before. April 22nd, 2018, Sunday. I'm here in uh, the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart, Germany. And just really taking in all of this creativity that Ferdinand Porsche had in his being. Where well, everybody else was, uh, I don't know, living in the times of, I would say, horse and carriage and buggies and stuff like that. Ferdinand Porsche was actually thinking about stuff like this. This is the first Porsche car from 1898. And what you can see underneath there, right there, right underneath there, is where you got the power from. His own design. It looks like a carriage, like a horseless carriage, if you will. But it actually was not a carriage at all. It wasn't pulled by horses. As a matter of fact, you can even see the wheel here. The steering wheel. I'm always thinking about uh, what actually made poor shore. Some of these very early inventors of these cars. What, I've, what actually had them thinking about doing this type of stuff when people were still in horse and buggy? Why was their thinking, you know, so radically different from everyone else's. What inspired them, you know, wanting to get rid of horse poop, manure, or something? Wanting to mow faster, move faster, or not have to provide so much food for horses, or what have you? You know, what was uh, their inspiration while everybody else was very much hooked on uh, horses, carriages, stuff like that. I didn't know that Porsche actually 
made it so you can have an engine, so to speak, inside of the actual tire. This was a design from him in 1900. 1900. At the age of 24, this is what he was designing. That's what this information talks about right here. It was uh, powered by electricity. Look at that right there. 1906 to 1923 it says. Actually it looks a lot like a Mercedes Benz design. And oddly enough this is when Ferdinand Porsche was working for Daimler. Gottlieb Daimler. Yeah. He was the chief technician for the Daimler Corporation back then. I think the, what does it say here? It says uh, from 1906 to 1923, Ferdinand Porsche works as a technical director at Austrio Daimler. During this time, he designs a touring sports car, but it never enters production. So much personality and stuff in these cars back then. Not so cookie cutter like the cars are these days. They had their own personality. They looked very stable and safe. And I don't know. There's a lot of ideas in it. Amazing. Look at that. Look at this chrome on this thing. Here. Look at that. Yeah, incredible. And um, what they gave us here in the museum was this little. See the headphones I have here. Got a, I have two headphones actually, and they gave this little device right here to be able to listen to the information from the Porsche Museum here. Yeah. So what it is is that you type in the number that's on each design each design display because each one of these vehicles is a, is a design it all started out as a concept like for example here you see 122 and 100 ton and you put that inside of the device and you will be able to hear in whatever language you speak there's a lot of languages you be able to hear the story, the history behind all of it. You see this on this racing car? You see that right there? That's an engine within itself that Porsche designed. This is Porsche during the Second World War. That's what this is right here. And uh, I could actually push in this number, 951, and you can listen to what they're talking about here. Let's see if we can get something. 951. Yes, 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 listen. The Minister of Armaments, Albert Speer, Ferdinand Porsche, is removed from his role as chair of the Tank Commission in October 1943. Of the 189-ton tank Maus, which was supposed to serve as a driving bunker, only two prototypes were built. Even his reputation with Hitler guaranteed Porsche engineering success. After the end of the war in 1945, Ferdinand Porsche is interrogated extensively by English and American authorities before being released without charge. To prevent him from a cooperation in a French Volkswagen, the French Secret Service arrests him on suspicion of war crimes and detains him for 22 months in various prisons. Following payment of bail, he is freed and later acquitted. Yeah. So that's what's going on right here with that uh, display. It's really cool that you can listen to all that stuff. I'm very much a history buff, especially for entrepreneurs and people who come up with you know, all these designs and stuff. It just really is amazing to me how they are totally on something else, totally on a different vibe, a creative vibe. When uh, people are, you know, 
living their day-to-day -day lives and thinking about groceries and all that other important stuff, these people are trying to design these type of things. Yeah. Here is a 1939 Porsche design. It's a four-cylinder boxer car with 33 PS, which is horsepower, and um, 24 kW, which is kilowatts. This vehicle would go 140 kilometers in 1939. I've been to quite a few museums and this one's very elegant. This is 1947. This is a Porsche Type 360. This vehicle is 385 PS, 283 kW, and this will travel 300 kilometers an hour. That's about 185, 86 miles per hour. Uh, 12 cylinders. 1947 on you. That's what Porsche was doing. Incredible. If you want to take your time and look at it all, you can go on their website, I would say. And uh, get your feel of it. And you will be surprised, at least I was really surprised, to uh, see how much these cars cost. You have cars that cost like some Porsche cars that are out there. And I would say, I would say most of them are over 100,000 euro, which is over $110,000. But some of them cost 280,000 euro, you know? There's people that have money, man. This vehicle right here, which Lynn said she liked a lot, is a Porsche 356, I don't know, slash two. 1948, four cylinders. Looks a lot like a Volkswagen actually, but I had heard that Volkswagen was, um, it was designed by Porsche from the concept of Porsche. As a matter of fact, it even had the engine in the back instead of in the front. So that's pretty dope. Excellent. This right here is a Porsche 356, see? Four cylinders, 40 horsepower, 29 kW, 149, excuse me, 140 kilometers it travels. Yeah. And it just goes on and on and on. This is a Porsche 356 as well, 1953. You see how quiet it is and everything? Uh, except for that sound that you might hear. <laughs> this is a Porsche 1600 GS Carrera GTL Abarth 1960 now here's a huge surprise to me Porsche actually designed tractors <laughs> amazing I don't know why that's so amazing to me because I know that they also have to do with designing the engines for military vehicles as well. It's a Porsche Schlepper. Standard 218. And um, has two cylinders. 1644 centimeter displacement. 25 PS, 18 kW. And uh, it says that this tractor here is a, is a collector's item, even though it has been designed for strictly utilitarian purposes in 1956. By 1963, they had sold 120,000 of those. What you're looking at right here is a Porsche 911 Carrera 
RS 2.7 Coupe from 1973. And I remember actually these vehicles right here. I didn't come to Germany in 1973, but I did come here in 1977. But it was saying that this is the most distinctive feature of the car. The spoiler. That spoiler right there. Popularly known as the duck tail. Hmm. And they also had one called the whale tail. And I think that that's the one right there. I also remember that one being driven a lot here in Germany back in the 80s. But it says uh, this one was a trendsetter in its use of such aerodynamic features with uh, its minimally equipped interior. And I have to say, I actually used to drive a couple of these. I had a friend who owned a Porsche lot in Frankfurt. And uh, one thing I did not like was the, the way that you could feel everything on the road. I didn't think that the, uh, the shock absorption was uh, what it should have been for such a highly acclaimed car. But other than that, it was really, really cool. This is a 911 uh, Porsche Turbo. Porsche Turbo right there. And I wouldn't even want to ask these people how much this would cost if I could buy it from them. They probably tell me it's not for sale. Yeah, that's what they normally say until you get to the right price <laughs> until you mention the right number you know so they probably sell this probably for about I would say at least 200,000 because this is a 1974 Porsche 911 turbo with uh, six cylinders 240 horsepower 176 kW and it had a maximum speed of 250 kilo meters. I like the interior on this one actually. There's room back there. There's actually some room back there. But this well tail was awesome. I've even seen bigger ones than this. And people are wondering what this was for. It was to keep the ass down on the car as it was ro rolling down the uh, Autobahn here. And again, you know, Porsche is excellent for Germany because Germany has the Autobahn where on uh, many parts of the Autobahn, which is the German ha uh, highway, there's no um, speed limit. As long as you're driving safely, you can drive as fast as your vehicle can take you. So there's many people that come here uh, with their Porsches from different parts of Europe. And, uh, you know, they drive their Porsches like no other time because here a large part of the Audubon I think they say like like 60% of the Audubon there's no speed limit the recommended speed is 130 kilometers but it said in 1974 Louise or Louis uh, sister of Ferry Porsche receives the very first 911 turbo for her 70th birthday <laughs> this is one of the kind car features of narrow chassis and a plaid interior yeah they also have plaid here in the design you see that uh, uh, written in Porsche it's plaid but that's what I was trying to show you on the inside of the car this is a high definition camera by the way so I try to pick up stuff and you know, keep it unpixelated but yeah up here you see upstairs all around. I, rem I remember this one too. Used to see this one a lot in Frankfurt. That, that Porsche. That 911 that I showed you as well. And uh, uh, nine, the 944. There was a time when the Porsche had the 959 out. Back then it was considered the fastest, uh, safest car in the world. The 959. <clears throat> yeah, I was I was so much into Porsche. I even like got me some some of those uh, Porsche shades that used to crawl around. You know, the ones that Kumo D used to wear in his rap videos. <laughs> that was back in the 80s too. Yeah. So they've been racing and winning for a long time. You know. I like that. 
I normally don't like numbers on cars or on a motorcycle. I don't have, a num I don't have any numbers on my motorcycle, even though it's a sports bike. But some of these cars look okay with the numbers on them. This is a 1974 Porsche 911 Carrera RSR 3.0. 330 PS. Again, PS is horsepower. And 243 kW. Amazing. Actually, the kW is more important than the horsepower, the kilowatt hours, how much power the engine generates. And again, it has the well tail on the back to keep the ass down as it's rolling down the track of the Autobahn. This is a Porsche 936 slash 77. Spider. Very little room on the inside. It says it was developed specifically for the World Sports Car Championship in 1976. But they're saying here that you see this Porsche have it upside down here. They were saying that according to the theory of the downforce, according to the theory of downforce, when this Porsche reaches a speed of 321.4 kilometer hours, convert that to miles per hour if you need to, it could theoretically drive on ceilings and that is uh, the equation there F equals I don't know what that number is after it says F equals I don't know what that sign is but that's a mathematical formula theoretically by the way this is a Porsche 956 <laughs> okay if you say so yeah, I think that this is the 944 right here. This one. So what's that? That's another frame. You want to see that one? That's a 911S. 2.7 coupe. Yeah, but this is... No, nope, I'm not right. I am wrong. This is a Porsche 924, not a 944. But I tell you, the body designs are a lot alike. This car is also a Porsche Carrera GT. 1979, 210 horsepower, 154 kW, and has a maximum speed supposedly of 240 kilometers. All red interior. <laughs> All red, a passionate color, right? And it has the little tail on the back. It has a little tail, surprisingly enough. And I don't know where Eagle alumni Lynn ran off to. I think she saw me with the camera on and she's, she just broke out, you know? I don't know, sometimes she's like uh, so interested in everything that she just leaves me behind. Cause I move too slow. You know, I wanna decide whether I wanna record or not, you know, for you, whether, whether I want to uh, get a particular angle or what have you. And uh, Lynn just actually just breaks out. This is super duper cool right here. Yeah. This is a Porsche 911 Carrera 3.2, four times four. So all wheel drive, 1984, 165kW and uh, 225 horsepower, 210 kilometers is the top speed. And you can see the well tail on the back back there. Porsche 944 Turbo. Those are Egyptian symbols on there, look at that. Yeah, 
with the shell sign on there. People think that's a shell, but actually it's the rising sun on there. That's the sun. It's a rising sun symbol. That's the sun. And those are rays coming from the sun. Eight different rays coming from the sun. By the way, symbolism. This is a hydromagnesium car. I like this car actually. With the Blaupunkt stereo system. Blaupunkt is also from Germany. Yeah, 184 kW this car has. As well as 250 horsepower. And it has a maximum speed of 260 kilometers an hour. Mm. Wow, that one right there, that is me. I would even keep the I would even keep this paint job on that car. I'm talking about that one right there. This one. That one right there. Wow. That car that we're looking at is uh, called the Porsche 911 Cup 3.8. It's a 1994. 228 kW, 310 PS, maximum speed of 280. Gotta get a look at the tail. Yeah. I think I'm kind of going in the wrong direction. I have, a, I have a knack for doing that. Actually, the woman told us when we came in here, one of the women that works here, she said that the museum is designed in a counterclockwise fashion. And I thought that was pretty interesting that they designed that you walk in a counterclockwise fashion to view all the displays here. Yeah, but check out this particular Porsche 911 Carrera 3.2. I like this unique top it has. You can take this off though. If you don't want it to be like that, you can take it off. I think it makes it a little bit more aerodynamic and it definitely makes it a little bit more of a conversation piece, huh? 1987, 231 PS, 245 kilometer top speed. They say that this particular model is a heavy collector's item. Porsche 944 Cabriolet. Hmm, 1985. That was a great year. Love the interior, it's wicked. It's, that, it's like a burgundy wine interior color. Very nice. Yeah. Porsche 911 SCRS. 1983. 184 kW, 250 horsepower, 230 kilometers top speed. Which is really not that fast. It's fast enough. But when you think about a lot of other cars, I'm not going to mention any other cars right now because it's all about Ferdinand Porsche and this stuff. But uh, I will mention a motorcycle. For example, I have a motorcycle that will go faster than that. Yeah, much faster than that. So I'm pretty surprised because looking at that wheel tail right there, Seems like this bad boy would at least to be able to do 320, 340, 350 kilometers. This is a Porsche 928 S. I remember these kind of cars as well quite vividly. Has a little tail on the back. Nineteen eighty three. Yeah. 1983, 221 kW, 300 horsepower, 250 kilometer top speed. That 
that's a 968 CS Cabriolet 1993 the year is 1993 on that 240 PS 176 kW 252 kilometers top speed here's another 928 GTS yeah. and these lights on the front the lights lay down but when you turn them on they, they pop up out of the enclosure pops up out of there Two hundred and fifty seven KW, two hundred and seventy five kilometers that can travel top speed. Yeah. And is this a police car? A Porsche Pulitz I. Yeah, I remember them driving these over here. Yeah. This is actually the one million Porsche ever built. Wow. This car is actually the one million Porsche ever built. Amazing. Huh. I remember going to Holland as well, and the Politi in Holland used to drive these back in the 80s. Yeah. How cool is that? Makes you want to be a cop, right? Look at that. Incredible. Porsche 911 Carrera Coupe. Yeah. 1996, this one is. Two hundred and eighty five PS, two hundred and ten KW. Wow. Look at that. And this car actually is much bigger than it appears on screen. And the screen doesn't look that big. It looks like a it's amazing how much is lost through video. Look at this. Look at that system in there. All that technology in there for braking. Amazing, huh? Look at this. <laughs> and it is a automatic. Oh no, it's not manual. It's automatic. And it has a phone in the back. See that phone? Right there. It says here, on July 15th, 1996, a very special 911 comes off the assembly line in Zuffenhausen. Thank you. The one million sports car. Produced by Porsche since 1948. So we're wondering, now that we've hooked back up, how is, how, what do you think about the, uh... I like, um, I like the museum. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot, but it's very car oriented, just, just cars. Yeah. In comparison to the Mercedes Museum that goes through the whole history mm -hmm. of the Western world and all that, you know. Yeah. But I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love the Porsches. Yeah. Which one was your favorite? Your favorite? Your favorite? This one from 1948. Uh huh. Or 1949. Yeah. And like in the dark orange. Mm hmm. Yeah. That was my favorite. One of my. Favorites. So, can you tell me? I can quite understand. Where is he from? Where? Where was he originally born? I'm not sure. Was it I seems thought he was born here. And well, it looks like it's Austria. It's Ferdinand Porsche. Is he Austrian or German? Because um, he kept Austria. going back and forth. Yeah. yeah, that's Lynn's brother. That's Lawrence Glenn right there. And he's actually a specialist with engines and stuff like that. And so he was thinking actually the same thing. I was thinking that the, the father, the original, the originator of all of that you see here was actually Austrian. So that's uh, south of Germany, borders Germany, Austria. 
But of course he came to Germany and uh, they created this legacy here from up here and above. This uh, museum is quite a spectacle. I was, I was, I just was asking, I was just asking Lawrence what's his favorite, you know, because he kind of sees things here a bit different than just looks, he, you know, you know, so I'm just, I, I'm, yeah, I'm really interested in what's, I would say the Porsche Boxer Spider. The Porsche, this one, this particular one? Well, it could be a different color, but other than that, yes, that one. Uh-huh. So he likes the Porsche Boxer Spiders. Wow, right, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. you look at the Porsche Boxer Spiders? design and the look, you know, and mm -hmm. the feeling that you make it from it. He said, just looking at the design and the feeling, you know. The feeling? Two -seater, uh huh. Yeah. Absolute two seater, no more than two. Mm -hmm. You can take the top down. Right. Yeah. He said, you can take the top down, the feeling you get. So he's a, he's a Porsche Boxer man. I know a lot of guys that love these Porsche Boxers. And the one he was looking at right here is this one. But he said, not just particularly this one, it's just the boxers in general. This is a 2015 boxer and uh, 276 kW, 375 horsepower, 290 kilometers top speed. This actually is an SUV. This is a Porsche Macan GTS right there. And it's, uh, it's also another very big vehicle that you cannot tell from the size of it on camera. 256 kilometer hours is top speed. 265 kW, as well as 360 horsepower. Yeah, really digging that. Let's see, inside is pretty dope too. So this car right here is a Panamera Porsche Turbo. Three hundred and six kilometer hours is the top speed. 440 kW, 550 PS, eight cylinders, about 4,000 centimeters or 4,000 displacement for the engine. Uh, and of course, it's a turbo. They say that this car has totally been redesigned in 2016. They made everything even better. Yeah, these museums here in Stuttgart is just really something that is a must-see. Definitely a must-see, and it was inexpensive to get in. Uh, about what, ten euro, which is about twelve dollars or so. Yeah. So yeah, it's a wrap. Thank you for checking this video out, and. Uh, Much love. Eagles Ubo Alles.